Hello and welcome to Robinson Wells Hobby Terrain. Today we're building this awesome Warhammer 40k terrain board, Big Boss Custa's Last Stand. In it, the Mega Knob Custa is in his final holdout, where the ground around him has been bombarded with artillery, knocking down the rickety walls that were left between him and his enemy, the Space Marine chapter called the Bloody Skulls. Custa is surrounded, but he's not going down without a fight. The Bloody Skulls are an Ultramarine successor chapter that I have been painting and collecting for the last two years. And whereas Big Boss Custa is going down in a swarm of enemies, the Bloody Skulls are going down thanks to eBay. Yes, I finally pulled the trigger and decided to sell this whole army on eBay. The auction was made live earlier this week and I got an offer within an hour. We negotiated a bit, but the price was too good and I decided to take the money. I don't mind this because right now I'm in a bit of a transitionary step in my hobby journey. I've never been a great painter, but I've been a decent painter, and I had resigned myself to the idea that I would never be great. I always targeted battle ready standard, which basically means that you paint to a level where you're not ashamed to put them on the tabletop, but they're not going to win any awards. I also learned a trick to painting miniatures somewhere along the way that while a single mini may not be amazing, but if you have an entire unit of minis where they're all dressed in the same uniform and all in that so-so battle-ready paint job, the whole thing would look greater than the sum of its parts. It was this philosophy that got me through the entire army of the Bloody Skulls, but I think it's also the reason why I've tended to gravitate toward big infantry armies like Bolt Action. None of my individual Bolt Action miniatures are anything special when you look at them, but when you field 30 Airborne or Africa Corps or Waffen SS, and they're all matching battle-ready paint jobs, they look pretty impressive. But I am no longer content with that. I want to be better. There are some things that I can't fix. The fingers on my left hand are numb and will be until I have surgery, if I ever decide to have surgery, and that's a difficulty I have to live with but I'm going to start trying to paint better. For years I have watched painting videos on YouTube of great painters, people like Squidmar and Miniac and the Brush and the Bolt Gun, but I've always just admired their paint jobs and then gone back to my old base coat, wash, dry brush, repeat process. I've heard for years about wet blending, but I've never tried it. Same with glazing and stippling and non-metallic metal and all sorts of other topics which may seem like painting basics for many painters. So I'm selling my Space Marines, buying some new models, and I'm going to start a new journey into painting them. I'm never going to win a Golden Neiman or a Crystal Brush, and I'm not trying to, but I'm tired of stagnating in my hobby. I want to get better. And just to say it for the 15th time, I promise this is not going to become a painting channel. So let's talk about this terrain project. I used a 2 foot by 2 foot piece of XPS foam and drew some circles where the impact craters would be falling from artillery. Then I carved out about a half inch into the foam to make a depression, and after that I took sculpt a mold and built up the edges around each crater. In terms of construction, this board is fairly basic, and that's because I knew it would be almost entirely covered with models. The terrain isn't the star of this build, the composition is. The terrain is there merely to help tell the story, and that story is of Big Boss Custa in the middle of a mess. So I surrounded him with craters, showing he's taken some serious casualties. I have a new product that I love, and it's this Loctite spray adhesive. It's a spray, but it doesn't eat foam. In fact, it's made for foam. So on a board like this, where I'm sprinkling sand, gluing the sand down would normally require a load of hand-brushed PVA glue or scenic cement, and it would take hours to dry, if not an entire day, this spray glue works almost instantly. The sand was down and fixed in less than five minutes and I could move on. So good for Loctite. That meant to move on to giving the exposed foam a coat of paint because I was going to use spray paint on the board and it would eat through the foam. I intended to use three colors of spray paint on the board, but while I was spraying outside and off camera, one of the nozzles got stuck and the can decided that it was going to spray its entire contents, which was about half the can. So this board got very, very brown. I gave it a little dusting with some yellow and left it to dry, but that was a lot of brown paint that was very thick. 
Back inside, it was time to give the craters a black interior and then dry brush the entire thing. For almost as long as I can remember, I've loved telling stories with models. I think that I got into this hobby when I was six years old, reading a copy of Boy's Life where they talked about building a model railroad and I was instantly hooked. My parents were the best kind of enablers and by eight they bought me a four by eight sheet of plywood and set it up in the garage for me to build my trains on. I built my first paper mache mountain on that board, eventually tore it down and built a bigger one, using power tools unsupervised when I was probably too young. When I bought my first army man, that board became a gaming table where I would solo play Vietnam battles every afternoon. A lot of things led me where, to where I am today, and a lot of little steps along the way, from working in a theater, to working in a sign shop, to working in a haunted house. All along the way, I learned little tricks about glue and spackle and foam and paint. But the thing is that now I want to transition from the big to the small. To not just look at the forest, but to see the individual trees. That's where I'm going with all of this. That's why I don't mind selling these models to buy other models. You build one mountain and you tear it down. That's fine. There are things that you hold on to and things that are meant to be stepping stones to something bigger and better. So the board itself is ready now and it's time to work on Big Boss Custa's barricades. I had a whole ton of pieces of junk laying around to build these out of. Toothpicks and styrene and chain and balsa wood. I also had these old panels from some games workshop building and I had some fencing and barbed wire from an old model project. I think learning how to let go of things is a good habit to get into in art. Yes, you want things to stay, you want to make things that matter, and I believe that everything that I make does matter in the moment that I'm making it. When I'm working on a model, even when I'm just painting it battle ready standard, that model is the entire world to me. I have to get everything just right, even though I know that no one else will ever see it but me. When I was that young kid in the garage building model trains, I was doing it for the sheer pleasure of doing it. I knew that no one was ever going to see it. When I wasn't in the garage, I made drawings of train layouts with topographical maps of terrain all around the railroad. I saved up my money and used it to buy 2x4s and chicken wire to build better mountains. And eventually I tore them down to play war games there. But even that was just for myself, I played solo war games. Yes, I'd occasionally play with my brother or my friend on occasion, but 90% of that time it was solitary and I'm grateful for that. I learned to appreciate the idea of doing things just for me, and I don't mean that in a selfish way, I mean that I learned to enjoy things without needing other people to justify it. On the old MGM logo at the beginning of movies where the lion roars, above the lion it says in Latin, Ars gratia artis, which means art for art's sake. That's where the pleasure comes from. It comes from creating something just for the act of creating. I'm not painting models to win awards or to sell things or to get rich. Even this YouTube channel is, to me, a kind of art for art's sake. I'm lucky to have the subscribers and patrons that I have. A list of my amazing patrons is right here, along with my latest patron, Cooper Jones, who is awesome. They and the people who donate to buy me a coffee keep me stocked in models and paints. But I'm not in this for the money. I don't chase the algorithms. I literally work for an online marketing agency doing SEO work, but I don't apply any of that to either my channel or my blog or my website. I don't know what that says about me. I'm not opposed to making money. I obviously write books to make money and I don't mind cashing those checks, but there is a lot about me that I like to do just for the sake of doing it. If it brings a little value to you guys along the way, then even better, but I'll do it either way. And here's the finished product. Big Boss Custa's Last Stand, featuring Custa and his fellow Mega Knobs. And for cavalry, I've got a goblin riding a squig that I converted from carrying a lance into carrying a flamethrower. Attacking are the Bloody Skulls Infiltrators, the Suppressors, the Reavers, the Infiltrators, the Blade Guard Veterans the chaplain and his retinue of assault intercessors. Anyway, tomorrow I'm going to box up all of these bloody skulls and send them off to their new home in North Carolina. 
I hope they bring joy to whoever gets them, and I kind of hope that it's a kid. Even Big Boss Custa is getting sold on eBay. That auction is still live, so I don't know where he's going. Thanks so much for watching, and thanks again to my patrons. If you want to drop me a tip to help me pay for a future project, those links are in the description below. In the meantime, stay safe, wear your masks, get vaccinated, and make art for art's sake. I'll see you next week.